Welcome to another video explaining the universe using the particle model. Today's video uh, discusses the feud between Edison and Tesla concerning the distribution of power. I've been going through a list of words, basically, uh, uh, and uh, basically been doing equations, and I will get back to this one. But uh, uh, today it's uh, Edison versus Tesla, and this the words maybe I should have listed was uh, transmission or power or power transmission. And uh, I'll get back to the equations next time. I'm working quite heavily on this to do a simulation on a spreadsheet. Okay, here, the, here's the feud. In the late 19th century, three brilliant inventors, Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla, Tesla and George Westinghouse, battled over which electricity system, direct current, DC, or alternating current AC would become standard for power transmission and use in the home. During their bitter dispute, dubbed the War of Currents, Edison championed the direct current system in which electrical current flows steadily in one direction, while Tesla and Westinghouse promoted the alternating current system in which the current's flow constantly alternates back and forth. Edison developed the world's first practical light bulb in the late 1870s, then began building a system for producing and distributing electricity so businesses at home could use his new invention. And he opened his first power plant in New York City in 1882. This, what I'm reading here, and I apologize for just reading, it comes from this link here, uh, the history channel here. Two years later, Tesla, a young Serbian engineer, immigrated to America and went to work for Edison. Tesla helped improve Edison's DC generators while also attempting to interest his boss in an AC motor he'd been developing. However, the Wizard of Menlo Park, that's Edison, a firm supporter of DC, claimed AC had no future. Well, Tesla quit his job in 1885, and a few years later, he received a number of patents for his AC technology. In 1888, he sold his patents to industrialist George Westinghouse, who, whose Westinghouse Electric Company had quickly become an Edison competitor. Well, Edison decided to uh, go on the... Uh, uh, if, fight the problem uh, with a bunch of propaganda, he was feeling threatened by the rise of AC, which could be distributed over long distances much more economically than DC. Well, I don't know whether Edison believed that or not. The article I'm reading from states, states that, but regardless, Edison, with his patent and his investment in his own power plant, launched a propaganda campaign to discredit AC and convince the public it was too dangerous. As part of this campaign, animals were publicly electrocuted with AC. Now, that surprised me. I, you know, I, I respect Edison for the work he's done and his uh, sticking to it to invent the light bulb and sticking to his ideas. Uh, to me, that was going too far. And when New York State sought a more humane, humane alternative to hanging its death penalty prisoners, Edison's, who was once an op opponent of capital punishment, recommended alternating current powered electrocution as the fastest, deadliest option. So he flipped here on his principles. Uh, don't uh, really am quite disappointed in that report of Edison, but the uh, fight goes on. 
Let's talk a little bit about DC power transmission. Well, it's not used so much in this country. It is used in other countries, and it has uh, starts here. Uh, this is just an arbitrary uh, one. It, it, it's not necessarily a uh, existing one. This is more symbolic, I think. But you have an you have a transformer here at the beginning that uh, takes AC and, and converts it to high voltage DC. And this is the transmission line. And at the other end, you have an inverter, which creates the AC back again. Uh, where this comes handy is in Europe, where you have a, a, a small countries that want to borrow. When country B wants to borrow electricity from country A, they have 50 cycle AC here, there's 50 cycle AC over here, and but they're not necessarily in phase. So you can use DC uh, transmission so that you can resynchronize the, take the DC and resynchronize it with the local AC. So it, it has its use in that case. Uh, but that's generally, see, it's, it's quite, First of all, you not only you have some losses in the transformer. Uh, if this is a passive rectifier, which it could be, there's some loss. But an inverter takes uh, energy to convert DC to AC. So there's power loss here. There's power loss in the high, high current here in the uh, in the transmission line. So it's pretty power hungry. Well, here's an AC picture. Uh, uh, Nikola Tesla AC polyphase system, and there's a you have a generator which generates AC, shows three phases, and you have a step up transformer which can step it up pretty high, 765 kilovolts, 500, 345, 230, 138. The highest gets dropped off at the really heavy industrial users. And then it, it, when you uh, want to go to commercial users, you drop it down again. And then when it gets to your home, there's a transformer outside your home to feed the house. And so uh, this is what's done today. This is how it's done. And, and the statement is that this is more efficient. And so I was looking for reasons to uh, for a particle model to explain that. Well, in my last two videos, I did one on DC uh, uh, and how many particles are needed to support, this, get this to a stable circuit. And the answer was that I got, basing it on the definition of one amp of current, is that you need 6.24 times 10 to the ninth G1s flowing around this circuit but it turns out for AC, it's the same thing. And so I was hoping, yeah, this is what I was hoping, that this would actually turn out to be less. But if you have one amp here and one amp here, uh, the RMS, the technique of equating the RMS voltage to, uh, to the DC voltage is, uh, it makes it the same. So there's, uh, particle model doesn't help explain this uh, particular uh, solution at all. Okay, so now let's look at the power transmission with no transmission line, 120 volts, 10 ohm load, you have 12 amps. So the source power is 120 times 12, which makes 1440 watts being generated. The power dissipated is the current squared times R, 12 squared times 10, gives you the same. With no tr transmission line connection, you got 100% of the power from your battery dumped into the resistor. Same thing with AC only. This is in RMS to make it equivalent. 120 times 12, still 1440. And I squared R is still, so they're identical. There is no advantage here either way. Now we put a transmission line, and let's do the DC first. And I'm going to simulate the transmission line with a one ohm resistance here, one ohm here, uh, giving me a two ohm loop resistance for the transmission. But that gives a net lo uh, load of 12 ohms, so 120 volts into tw to 12 ohms gives means you got 10 amps, you've lost current. 
because of the transmission line. The source here is 120 times 10. 1200 watts is your source power. Your load power is 10 amps times 10 amps squared times 10. 10 amps squared times only is 1000. So you you generate 1200 to get 1000. You're losing 200, which means you're losing 16.6% in the transmission line. That's a lot of power to be losing to a transmission line. AC power, though, is the same thing because RMS is equivalent to DC, and you get 10 amps here, and, and the numbers are all the same. The power generated is 120 times 10. The load is 10 squared times 10. It loses 16%. So where is the big advantage? Where is the big advantage here? Well, what I haven't done with those circuits is increase the voltage, double the voltage. Say I want, uh, if I, instead of 120, I want 240 and I want to step it up. Uh, you got to use a, uh, a high voltage, you got to step it up using a transformer is what it amounts to. And, and it turns out the transformer is key to this whole solution. This is the same pictures I've already showed. Let's go on. Well, so let's look at the transformer. The transformer is a passive device. There, you don't have to power it. You don't have to put DC power to anything here. You take AC on the input, you get AC on the output. The number of turns on the primary side, if it's the same as the number of turns on the secondary side, then you get a one-to-one -one correspondence, 120 in, 120 out. And the turns ratio is uh, the primary divided by secondary, that's the turns ratio. And the voltage, it turns out, is the same ratio. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of details. I'm asking you to accept this, these ratios. But because it's a power a passive device, the power out equals the power in. Well, you have core losses and heat loss. Yeah, you get some loss in transformers as you do with any other passive component. Now, but let's say we want to double the voltage to the transformer. So I'm going to, uh, again, it, this is the ratio, but power out equals power in means that the voltage out, out at the secondary times the current at the secondary must equal the voltage at the primary times the current at the primary. This is power out, this is power in. I rearrange this equation to solve for the current out because I'm going to double, I'm going to have a source of 120 I'm going to have current of 12, but I'm going to double, uh, go through a transformer that makes the voltage source 240. The current is less. 240 volts at 6 amps is the same power as 120 volts at 12 amps. Yeah, but this current reduction is very important. And it's almost free. Well, yeah, you got to build a transformer. Uh, it's almost like magic. So now let's take the AC power transmission and I'm going to put the step up transformer and a step down transformer to get to the home. And I'm assuming that this is a reflected impedance is 10 ohms. That's a typical thing. If you've done your transmission line system right, you this 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 impedance gets reflected back here. So it's 120 volts into 10 ohms gives you 12 amps. Now this is a step up of one to two. There's two turns there, four turns there, and here's four turns and two turns. So you have a step up and a step down. But when you step it up to 240 from 120, you only get six amps. But now six amps, the loop, the, the loss in the transmission line, which is only two ohms, is I squared R, six squared times two is 72 watts, whereas with even with DC, normal DC, you got a 200 watt loss. It's the effect, it, the higher the voltage, the less the current, the more efficient the power transmission becomes. Quite interesting. 
So yeah, this is this is very inefficient. Uh, you may have power dispute loss here and here, and you got high current, high uh, I squared R loss here. Whereas with the step up, you drop the current, you get a very little loss here, you get l more loss here and more loss here as you step down. But overall, you can easily distribute higher voltage to heavy industrial users, uh, somewhat higher voltage for commercial users and then what we have in the home. Much more efficient. Clearly Tesla won. Uh, but Edison had a point, even though he went about it the wrong way. Today, electrical hazards cause more than 300 deaths and 4,000 injuries in the U.S. workforce alone. This is not the home. This is not uh, uh, people out in vacationing. This is not lightning. Uh, this is at the workplace. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, estimates approximately one fatality per day as a result of electrocution. Know that any amount of current over 10 milliamps is capable of producing painful or to severe shock, and currents between 100 and 200 milliamps are fatal. Yes, it's dangerous. Edison had a point but the efficiency of the uh, AC over DC because of the I squared lost in the transmission line, one AC out, and we are willing to live with that. And unfortunately, some people die when they get electrocuted. My name is Bob DeHilster, and I am your Particle Model Guru. If you have a question, ask Particle. Thank you for your attention.